is a whole world of natural beauty. And we plan to capture it all for the Care Channel and Relax With Care. Join us on our mission to bring relaxation to everyone who needs it. Secret Beach is really cool. Um, it's not that secret, but it is just a little hidden gem in Tahoe just because you're hiking through the forest and all of a sudden you just come across just a tiny little cove and it's just got these beautiful rocks and beautiful sand and it, I had the whole place to myself which was ideal. It was a great place to watch the sun come up. The funny thing about these beaches, especially in the morning, is they're completely different. There's an ideal setting for morning which is sort of this like calm, light blue aesthetic while the mountains in the background are all lit up. But when the sun comes out, it starts spilling light onto all these rocks and it just wakes up. You can all of a sudden see how blue the water is. You can see through the water and you can see a little bit to the bottom. The rocks look warm and inviting and the clouds look great. So it's really kind of like two shoots in one location. Um, so I really, really appreciate Tahoe for that because that happened all the way across the board on this entire trip. In the evening, we decided to poke around at Emerald Bay. Uh, there are a few shots that I've always kind of wanted to get of Emerald Bay. Eagle Falls is a waterfall you can access right off the road. And there are some really famous shots of Emerald Bay where you see Eagle Falls in the foreground and you see Emerald Bay in the background. So that was the goal to just see where we can get those shots. Unfortunately, we got there a little too late because it's such a deep cove and there's tall mountains to the west of Emerald Bay. Uh, the light went away super quick. So two seconds ago, that, was, that had light on it, and now the sun's going away really, really fast, so I gotta get this shot. Eagle Falls and Emerald Bay was a spot that we went to two days uh, to kind of gather everything, and it's a little tricky because there's so many people and the lighting can be kind of weird. One of the hard things about this lake, it's a really popular spot. We're trying to do it during the week so there's less people, but there's still quite a lot of people. The problem is they're gonna stand in all the spots we want to shoot because that's the most optimum spot. It's the best view. Those are the shots we want. And um, we're not really the pushy type. We're not gonna push people out of the way. Um, but we can be patient and wait. Maybe we'll get an opening and get that shot. Basically happened is we got here, we got in a couple shots, and then the light started covering the middle island there. So I don't want to shoot this location unless that's fully illuminated. And that's, you know, luckily we're just like so close to all this stuff that we can come here and we can troubleshoot a location. We can see what happens because it's 20 minutes away from our hotel. So we can go hit up another location, come back and then do this tomorrow night. We also don't have a ton of evening shoots on this trip, so we can shoot this three times this week until we get it right, if we want to. trip and I break an important piece of equipment. Made it out of our Big Sur shoot without breaking and losing anything and this one I break a lens. It's been years since I broke a lens and it did not feel good. I was uh, climbing down on some rocks and trying to get a shot looking back toward Eagle Falls. And so there's a little bit of angle of the rocks set up the tripod and maybe it was narrower than I thought. I got a call from Ryan and he had just told me that his tripod had fallen over and he completely destroyed his wide angle lens and scuffed up his new camera pretty good. It, fought, it fell on, like straight onto the, the wide angle lens, face first. Well, all right then. It would have been tragic if you lost the whole camera. All right, well, let's get together and go to Rubicon. All right. So Ryan's 
Ryan was sitting there, and a gust of wind comes by, knocks his camera completely over, completely destroying his wide angle lens. And he says the camera's fine, but the battery pack won't screw on properly. So he's, uh, he's out a $800 lens and a $400 battery pack for this trip. Day one, here we go. Guess I'm lucky though, because it could have been a lot worse. I could have taken out the whole camera on the very first day of the very first shoot we've ever shot on it. But the camera seems all right, it's beefy. Uh, Black Magic built it well. But it landed right in the lens. The lens is smashed up, that was done. I get spoiled, even though I break gear, I get to use someone else's. Luckily the camera's still okay, but it's never really easy to hear news like that. Especially when a very vital lens, like a wide angle lens, um, is taken out of the equation all of a sudden. The biggest deal was that his camera was fine. Because if we had lost a camera on this shoot, that would have made things a lot harder. We ended the first day of the shoot with a sunset at Rubicon Trail. It's a nice little beach. The clouds were perfect. Right when we got there and we started shooting, we knew it was gonna be a good sunset because where the sun was setting was clear and there was a really cool looking cloud on the other side. So we just kind of sat and waited for it. We had a few ducks and geese floating around. I was able to fly the drone at Rubicon Point, which was really, really ideal. And we got, I think, uh, just epic sunset footage. Sunset was beautiful. Sunset was absolutely amazing. Fireworks, loved it. 